As quilters, sometimes we want to change things up a little, but there are so many choices. Where to begin? Do we choose the pattern? Do we choose the fabric? Do we choose the technique? There's just a gazillion options to choose from. I'm Leah Louise from Inspired Quilting by Leah Louise, and I chose a scrappy, low-volume quilt background and some raw edge applique flowers. Oh my goodness, they are gorgeous, and they're so much fun, and the best part is they're easy. Let me show you how. Before we get started, I just want to show you what we're going to do today. I am so excited about these little quilts. They are adorable. That background works beautifully. The raw edge applique. There's a couple different options. Oh my goodness, I think you'll really enjoy this. So let's go ahead and get started. I want to show you how to make your own. First, we'll focus on the background, and I want to show you how to do this patchwork and put all your different pieces, get all your scraps of fabrics, and this is low volume, but there are a lot of other options that you can use, whatever you have. Let's go ahead and make it work. And then this one we do just with wide strips back and forth. And I did it sort of in a landscape style where we have ground and then a mid area and some blue sky just to give the illusion of a landscape. It's a lot of fun to put backgrounds like this together. So let's go ahead and let me show you some ideas of how to do your own. I pulled together a collection of fabrics I consider to be low volume. And we're going to work on making a background for our art quilt. And I want to use low volume because I want the motif that we're going to put in the middle to really stand out and be dominant. So my background is going to be multi-pieced. It's going to be a great big patchwork. You can do it where you take, let's see, individual squares. These particular ones are three and a half. They're left over from a previous quilt. All these pieces I've used in quilts, and these are the the scraps and have become now my, my go-to when I want to do um, another project. I get all these pieces, and I find things that fit, like, you know, this is just about the same size, and how can I piece it and put it together and make something beautiful for the background? So I just pulled a lot of fabrics together. We all use low volume fabrics at some point in some manner. We don't always call them low volume. I do just because that's the name I became familiar with. And I buy a lot of what's called low volume bundles. And it has a big selection of different fabrics. Now, I keep them in basically two different piles. I don't divide these by size. They're, well, a little bit. They're all low volume, and that means they have lighter backgrounds. They're a little bit on the neutral tone. The colors are subdued. Now, there are some others with darker colors, but because it has that white background, sometimes you can pull it off. So I keep a variety of things with this color group just so I can have some options. Now a lot of times what I'll do is I'll have pieces where I keep uh, my scraps, my blocks. These are pieces that weren't big enough for charm squares or they got cut up from um, you know something I was working on. This is left over from the very first quilt video I did. Oh my gosh that brings back some memories. But then I have a lot of these, you know, rectangular pieces. So these are perfect for coming up with patchwork. And then what I'll do is I'll put these small ones together so they match the big ones, put those together. And then before you know it, you have a, a, a quilt top, or in this case, a background for an art quilt. In addition to blocks, I also keep strips. So if you've seen me cut my fat quarters, you know I cut them basically into three sections. I'll cut a 10 inch strip, which I use for the bigger piecing, the bigger blocks, half score triangles, flying geese, whatever I may be using. So that's usually about 10 to 10 and a quarter inch piece. Then I'll cut a five inch strip because I like using my fat quarters. And I will use these in a lot of different ways. I'm going to show you one thing we're going to do with this today. And then that gets set aside in the basket. And I'll, we're going to talk about <laughs> organizing the baskets another day. I know we have a lot to do, but I really want to stay focused here. 
And so these are the odds and ends of strips. Some can be, you know, this looks like about an inch and a half. This is probably two and a half. And, you know, some are even wider. This is probably three and a half, not quite four. But I can use these. I can use them as they are. I can cut them down. I may decide I want to put this on my background and then find a pretty strip to put across it. And so there's so much you can do. We're going to do piecing first, and then I'm going to show you some layering ideas that I like to do. But one thing is, for example, the, the last quilt that I just made, which was the, oh my goodness, it was the Scattered Triangles quilt. And I did the flying geese and alternated those blocks with strips of charm squares. That just made it easy to put together because we didn't have to worry about the flying geese corners. Now, the other thing I did to avoid matching seams is notice how I take my five inch charm squares, but I mix in some pieces that are not exactly a full charm square. They may be five inches wide, but they're different width. I'm going to use this as part of my patchwork background. And the fact that it's already pieced makes it a perfect option. And then I can just add more pieces to it. But I don't want to use anything as big as five inches. I want to have smaller pieces in there. So what I'm going to do is fold this. It, it's about 40 inches long. That means I can cut it down and use it in my background pretty easily. The first thing I'm going to do is cut the width. This is wider than I want. Now I'm not going to cut it down the center because if I use this in the same background, I don't want it to be matchy-matchy. I want these to be different sizes. Now, on the other hand, if you have a lot of squares of a similar size and you want to patch those together, that'll be perfect. But that's not what I have in front of me. Therefore, I need to be a little more selective about what I'm doing. And this way, I think it gives me a little more design opportunity to sort of mix it up. So with a five inch wide piece, a length that's a total of five inches, I'm just going to slip this in here. I could cut this at two and a half, but again, I don't want equal. So I'm going to cut this at two and three. And that way I can put them together in the same piece and they won't look exactly the same. Now, the other thing I'm going to do is cut them by length. Generally, when I do an art quilt like this, I will use a smaller base, a smaller, um, what do I want to say, quilt back to arrange my design that I'm going to make. And a lot of times I'll go with a 12 inch wide and I really like the two to three ratio. So that would be 12 by 18. So that's like taking two six inch by three six inch. And I find that that's a good ratio for balance within a piece. Unless you have a specific size you want to go for, squares are very popular, long and narrow. So there's no specific rule, but if you don't know where you're going, start with a square or something that's a two to three ratio. And so the fact that this is 40 inches means that I can cut this into thirds, which would be, what's that, 14 inches. And that gives me plenty of room to work with, with if I'm doing a 12 inch piece that's 12 inches wide because that gives me some overhang. So let me go ahead and line this up. So I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. And I like that it falls in the middle of this here. So 5, 10, whoops, did I miss? I think it's supposed to go here. So we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Yep, I'm glad I checked. I tell you, it pays off so many times to measure twice and cut once. I mean, that would have been workable, but 
unfortunate nonetheless. Okay, so we're going to see how well I did this. If I did my math right, it's already looking longer than it should. So we're going to go with a 14 here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Oh, and that's going to be right on the seam. So what I'm going to do is cut this right here along the seam. So I want to put this right up so you can see it. So I'm going to fold my seam allowance this way. And I'm going to cut right here. This is a magic trick. If you ever are pulling um, stitches out because something went together not quite right. If you cut, oh, I cut too far. All right. But anyways, see how that all came out and you don't have to pull apart stitches? We interrupt your regular programming for an important announcement. Look what just came in the mail. Oh, my goodness. I have to show this to you. I looked at this before it arrived, so I know what's in here, but I haven't seen it. And I know there's some no, uh, low volume fabrics that I'm going to have to use. Oh my goodness. Dandelion wishes. How perfect. Look at those low volume fabrics. They are going to be perfect for exactly what we're working on today. And even better is we have some great colors that we can use for our motif, which is going to vary depending on what your particular favorites are. But I just want you to see some of these. When you get used to seeing how low volume fabrics are used, when you see what otherwise might have been a bland looking fabric, you're going to have a whole new, uh, what do I want to say, impression or idea of what you can do with them, like this with all the colors. Oh my goodness. I love these multicolor pieces because they go so well in everything. They add a bit of color. It's not huge. It's not bright. It doesn't stand out. But oh my goodness, it sure draws a lot of interest. And pieces like this, this is great. Oh my goodness, yes. Because I want to do a, a blue to the top, kind of like a sky, a little bit of a landscapish idea and these will be great for some flowers but you know there's going to be brighter colors too okay enough for the interruption let's keep moving on and talk about low volume fabrics and our quilt top for our art quilt that we're going to make it's getting exciting and that ladies and gentlemen is how you cover up a blunder when the video stops midstream okay so let's move on we cut this, we got some end pieces we pulled out. We have two nice clean edges and I didn't have to use a seam ripper, yay. So this works out really well. So I have a double size, or excuse me, a double uh, length in two different sizes of each of these, these fabrics. Now I can use these together in one piece. And let's say I can put, let's do a wide one. And then now I don't want to have these seams line up, so I'll turn this one this way. And then I can use, actually I'm going to go sideways. I think you can see better. I just want to give you an idea of how these things can go together quickly without a whole lot of um, thought and figuring out what goes with what. And I think I like the color better over here. And I'm liking this. And so, oh, I don't have this one in yet. All right. Um, I'll take this on the low side and put it down here. And then what I can do is start taking in um, some other pieces. I, I like putting in some color. I can put in, let's see, what else do I have? These are getting into my box pieces, my little short pieces here. If you find you have a narrow piece that doesn't quite fit up with these, then turn it sideways and tuck it in and you can sew it that way. So this could be something, and I like this, I don't know how well that can be seen, but it's musical notes. Uh, or what do I want to say? Um, music. It's just printed music. I'm not sure what it's called. I'm not musically inclined, I'm afraid. And so we can, you know, just start putting pieces together like this. But another thing you can do is take a strip of fabric and put a long one in here between these two narrows. 
So let's say we put this here and we have that there and then we find something um, to put in down here because we've got a little blue. We'll put some blue. The blue matches the beige. So I'm going to create this until I get to the full size that I need. And because we've got seams in here, I need to overestimate, overcreate it so that I have plenty um, to use after my seam allowances. Remember, you want to keep a good inch on the outer edge. So keep these outer pieces at least, you know, a couple inches or more wide because you may only use half of this. So if it's a real narrow piece, you may end up losing most of it and you don't want your piece to end with just, you know, this narrow bit of fabric. So it's always a good idea to put your wider pieces outside. I like to have some in the middle just because it balances things. But the other thing you can do, which is a lot of fun, is to take something like this. Let's say we're, we're going to go this way and then come in with a piece like this and start going sideways. And so these pieces will go in the opposite direction. So these are vertical, these are horizontal, depending on which way you're looking at the camera. And what else? Let's see, we can do this. Oh, here's some fun dots that I like. And then we can come back down here and uh, put in, let's see, what do I have on a longer piece? Oh, here we could put, you know, that might be bigger than what I want, but I'm thinking about kind of maybe just folding that in half and kind of doing some vertical, but I don't want those to line up. I would want this to go like that. And um, here's another green piece, even though we have a, a piece over here. I'm okay with repeating some pieces as long as they're not close together. With a small background like this, though, it's it's very easy to come up with, um, you know, individual pieces. Now, if you don't have a lot of low volume fabrics, take what you have and cut them into maybe a four patch or a nine patch, and then just repeat it throughout your, you know, make enough to make the block that you need and then put the nine patch in, but turn it around so the colors fall in different places. So that's another way to work it. There's so many different things that you can do to put this together. So I'm going to go ahead and get this piece and I'll come back and show you what it'll look like. We're getting close. And here's my background all finished. I use all kinds of pieces in different directions and some completely you know, across the, the width and others I pieced and these are tiny. I kind of went in a different direction. Some are vertical, horizontal. It's just, you know, a mis mish, I can't even say it, mish mash of everything. And I really like it. Now, I have my batting here. So what I'll do is quilt this on top. Now, I did come up about a half inch short, but that's okay. There's no specific uh, dimension that I have to meet. And rather than put on just an extra little strip, I'm just going to go with this because this works really well. I have plenty on both sides. That works fine. And so I will get this basted on. All I'm going to do is spray baste. I'll show you that, but there is something else I want to show you first. So I hope you like this. I think it's a lot of fun. Batiks, which work great with some prints, with some white on white, with what I call the calicos, kind of the more traditional. And I've, I've got some of those new fabrics in here. Oh my goodness, I just fell in love with those. So there's some fun and hearts. I love hearts. I love dots, all these kinds of things. So, you know, bring in your favorite kind of fabrics and themes in the fabric, and you'll be really happy with that. The first thing I'm going to do is baste everything together before I start doing any sewing or quilting. And I'm going to use my spray base. I love the uh, the 505. It's a fantastic product. Links are below. And what I do is, if I'm going to do it inside at my cutting table, I'll put a sheet or something down because there will be some overspray and I don't want it to get on my other fabrics or on my uh, my cutting board or my cutting mat. So I'm going to lay the background down. How funny. 
I, you know I use old sheets for the back of my small quilts like this as a stabilizer. And it's obviously from the same set of sheets because it's the same color. So what I'm going to do then is put down a piece of batting. But in order to adhere it, the first thing I'm going to do is spray. And you're going to get better adhesion if you spray on the fabric instead of the batting. The fabric has a tighter weave and there's more area for the adhesive to actually stick to. And so you don't need a lot. And what I do when I'm at the table is I'll spray from the outside towards the middle. Instead of going like this and spraying out where it goes everywhere, spray from this inside in, whoops, without kicking it up, and just get a few spots here and there. And I'm going to swing around here with my left hand, see if I can do that. Not very well. But I just mostly want to get the edges and one spot in the middle. Okay, so that's that. And once that's set, I'm going to put my batting on top. I'm just going to lay it gently and tap it from the center out. If you get a wrinkle, just lift it up and reposition it. And I just want to show you, you can see how this is, it's actually stuck to the bottom too. See how this is adhered very tightly and that piece just stays right on there. Well, it's also incredibly easy to remove. I can just hold this down and pull this piece off if I want to reposition. If I feel that there's, you know, a little lump or bump, whatever there may be. And so a lot of that occurs if you put your hands down hard and spread it. You just want to tap it in place so everything just sort of fits where it needs to be. And then you can turn it over and just make sure there's no wrinkles here and you're good to go. Now, if you notice, this is um, some old batting. I'm using scraps. Before I was able to buy the low loft cotton batting, I used to buy the polyester. And just because I like the low loft, again, we were living in a warm climate and I wanted the lighter quilts. And you can, I mean, you can see right through this. So what I'm going to do is use a second piece and I'm going to spray the back of this right here. Now, as I'm spraying um, for this piece here, See how all these seams come this way? I'm going to spray from this direction inward because that is potentially going to get under some of those seams and hold them in place. So while I'm quilting, they don't flip around. I don't know how big a deal it is, but it sort of, you know, makes me feel better. Like I have a little more control <laughs> over what I'm doing. So I'm just going to spray from this direction. There we go. And put the batting here and we'll kind of piece that on there so it goes from side to side and this is my straighter side so this is the side I'm going to fuss with first now the other thing I'm going to do is I want to stick these together and while you can have difficulty putting batting to itself this is going to work fine just to hold it so I'll just give it a good spray and I'll lay this on top, making sure that my backing is completely lined up. So I have this much here and this much here. So I'm good. And so I'll give this another nice little push and pull this over, make sure everything's good. And now I have a great quilt sandwich that I can just start quilting and it's going to hold together. I don't have to worry about pins. I don't have to do any kind of basting. It's just going to work really well for me. And I'm going to be doing long, narrow quilting on this um, in the vertical. So I'm going opposite. Most of these are lateral and I'm going to come in the opposite direction. So you've seen how I use the fusible fleece and also how to use old pieces, your scrap pieces of batting, and you can pin it or you can use the spray base. Um, I really like it. It's quick and easy. And then I just fold this sheet up till the next time. And after I use it a couple times, if it gets sticky, I just throw it in the wash and it's good to go because this will wash out of your quilt. 
I'm all set to do my machine quilting. I have a line drawn down the center. That'll start. That's my starting point. I'll work from the center out. I have my walking foot on and a new needle and I have a nice full bobbin so I am set to go. The first thing I'm going to do is just sew down that center line. I'm probably going to go just a little bit to the side of it. All right, I have my needle ready to go and I'm just going to go from the top all the way down to the bottom. Actually, don't forget, we want to increase that stitch by just a little bit. And if you watch, I'm lining this line up just inside my presser foot. And rather than go straight on the line, I'm going to set it off a little bit like that. And I'll show you why when I get farther along. So you can see here, if I sewed right on this line, I'm going to be really close to this seam which isn't generally a problem, except that I'm going to do some really close quilting, and I don't want to be quilting right in that seam, right in that ditch. So by offsetting the first uh, row of quilting just a little bit, then I can avoid doing that. Now, with as many seams as there are on here, I'm not going to be able to do that throughout, but that's okay. As long as I sort of get myself stabilized in the center, I'm good with however it works. come down to the end and trim my threads. Now I do go in the same direction top to bottom, um, at least at this point. I may decide to do something different. Oh look, I got a little curve there. I think I was, I was talking. That happens, but that's okay. It's hardly going to be visible. Besides, I'm making a flower and the flower is going to go right in the middle, so we'll be okay. Now the next thing I'm going to do at this point is add my guide in so I can measure how far I want to be away in order to do my next row of stitching. So I just tuck it in the back and then decide how far I want the stitching to be away. Because this guide, let me just raise my presser foot, this guide will follow this line and however far apart I move it is where this is going to fall. So I want to do probably every half inch or so on the quilting, which is quite excessive, but that's the look that I want to go for. So I'm going to bump this out. Let's see how far this is. And if I put this right there to my needle, that's just about two inches. So that works. And I'll pull it out just a little bit more. Give me some room. And I am just now going to go straight down. I'm going to come right inside just to give me extra space to work with. The reason I'm putting the wide lines in first is because if you sew continuously really close together, you're going to pull this fabric. And eventually this top is going to kind of come down at an angle, as will the bottom. So by spacing yourself out a little bit initially, then you are going to have much better luck when you go back to add the smaller stitching lines. You can see I let the walking foot do all the work. I'm putting the last wide row on this side and if I use my gauge right here it brings me pretty close to the edge. Now remember I have extra fabric uh, to cover over the edge of the quilt back so I definitely have plenty of room to work with. Cut that off. And I'm sure you noticed I got a little, whoops, gets caught. Um, I got a little wavy in there, but again, we're not going to see that. So the next thing we're going to do is turn around and do the same thing on the other side. And 
And now you can certainly work from the top and just switch your uh, gauge to the other side. It can come over here, but I guess, I don't know, maybe I'm a little lazy and I just like leaving it where it is and uh, I'll come in and work from there. All right, now because there's a seam right there, I'm just gonna bump myself over a little bit. And that's just the way I do it, That no particular reason. And I think it's my uh, stitch in the ditch, uh, what do I want to say, aversion. I, I've never been a straight stitch in the ditcher, so <laughs> I kind of stay away from that. And now we'll just finish off to the edge here, and we'll be ready to go back and do the small stitching in between. When I get to my last row of stitching, I can't use this gauge because I'm going off the side, so I'm making it a little bit narrower because so you can pull this out and push it in. And I'm going to bring myself about a half inch from the edge and set my gauge there so that I kind of keep a relatively consistent line all the way through. not doing so good on the consistent part but you can see if you get off why you don't want to go right on the edge because that's going to flip up on you. All right so this is all in place which is wonderful. I'm going to take this gauge out because I'm not going to use that. And I'm going to tighten up my foot. It feels just a little bit loose on that thumb screw there. No, nope, it's good and tight. All right, so what I'm going to do is, again, I'll go back to the middle. Oh, it's so hard with gloves to deal with the red. I'm going to go back to the center and just start working my way out. Let's take a look at this. I think I went with two inches. And it's just about two and a quarter. So if I went right down the center, which is right here and right there, um, I think that's going to work. So what I'm going to do is go a little off center. I don't want this to be perfect. And by mo no means do I think what I'm doing is going to be perfect to begin with. But this is just intentionally creating it again that shabby chic look it doesn't all have to line up in you know straight little rows so this is more or less the center i'm going to come a little bit over this way and then let's see let's see how it goes i'm just winging this What I want you to see is perfection is not a requirement by any means. And so now I will come back in here and I'll sew right down the center there. that with that extra layer of batting we do get quite a bit of a, a poofy loft between our quilting lines and you'll notice the difference on the other one with fusible fleece that you're going to get much less uh, loft on that and you can just decide what you like best now this one I'm going to come a little closer to and so I want to have some wide and some narrow don't need to do any pulling along because the walking foot is doing all the work but what I am doing is just making sure I'm holding this taut sideways so I don't get any rippling or bundling up along the way so I'm going to take another let's see I'm going to do a narrow one here and a narrow one there because whoops 
Um, so I'm going to do, take my gloves off, I can't thread with gloves. I'll do a narrow one here and a narrow one here. So I'll have a group of narrows and then I'll have some thick ones. And I'm just going to kind of create that across the way. So let me uh, do my thread and I'll be right back. And this side is completely finished. I have some wides with lots of narrows and a few wides mixed in. And what I'm going to do now is turn this around and come back the other way and do this side in the same manner. And once I finish, that's it. So this goes very, very quickly. So let me go ahead and uh, get a few rows in here and we'll see where we stand. Whoops, I gotta get all the way to the beginning. There we are. And we're off. When you get close to an edge, come, you know, as close as you're comfortable. But then I always want to make sure there's a couple narrow rows on the side because I don't know exactly where I'm going to be trimming this. So this way I know that everything will be held pretty close together. So I am going to put a row right next to this one on the outer edge. So we did that one. Now, let me just get this in here. If you notice, this is not exactly the same width up here, and that's okay. What we're going to do is take one more narrow one, and then actually I'll just, I'm going to do both of these narrow, and I'll show you kind of how we split the difference. So we'll do another narrow one right here, leaving enough room to do one more row here. Alternatively, you could just choose to go down the center. Because I want to keep them narrow, I'm going to stay closer together. And I'm only doing that because that's the look I want versus the wider strips. There's not one way that's right or wrong. But see how this is getting wider? So I'm going to let this piece, this row here of quilting, come out a little wider too. And now I should be able to come right up to the top and split the difference between these two rows and come right down the middle. This is a good reason to know why varying your widths is great because this is <laughs> a perfect way to finish without worrying that, oh, everything over here is a certain size and this is going to be different. But notice we have some wide ones, some narrow, some narrower ones. And so just, you know, do what works well for you. And notice how I'm keeping my presser foot right in the middle here. And that's going to make it look nice and even. And that's it. And now we are finished. With my design cut out and interfacing attached to the back, that fusible interfacing so it gives it some uh, stiffness that I can sew easily with, I'm just going to use a little narrow zigzag and I put a stem and a few leaves and I'll go down the stem and let's see. I want to get past here, but I also want to be able to come up and catch the stem. And I'm going to move this over just a little bit, like that. And just keep moving things around as I need it. And so I cut some leaves out, and then I also cut these little crescent shapes 
out of a darker color. It matched the accent in the fabric. And I just thought it looked kind of nice. Okay, now we'll go along the outer edge here. And I'm kind of staying on the fabric with the needle just hitting off the edge. Or at least that's my goal. I'm not necessarily getting it there every time, but more or less. I'm just going to come through here. And let's see, maybe I'll just run a second line right here. Just to kind of add a little something and get me back to where I need to be more than anything. Okay, so we're going to go down here. Not going to worry about that one just yet because the next leaf will be this large one here. So I want to come down to about the top of the pin. Tuck that in there. There we go. All right, hold on. Got to get everything just lined up so they can kind of get in there together. There we go. And just tuck this in. And it's, you know, if you do slow, long curves like this, I don't know whether to call them slow or long, what the better word is, but the walking foot does a great job. And by doing the zigzag, you're catching everything in there so that it's all going to be nice and tightly sewn and held together. And just, you know, swing around the edge. And then I'm going to come back around over here, come up this side. And then from here, I'll come back around like I did the other one. Sort of like a, a stem looking or a vein. And then we'll come down off the fabric. And I'm going to come from the top down on the other side as well. Honestly, I'm afraid if I go back up, I might get, you know, some waving in the fabric because it doesn't always um, go quite so well in the opposite direction. So let me go ahead and finish this stem and leaf and then I'll show you how to do the flower. So I pinned my layers of the rose or flower, whatever this may be, all together and I'm just going to kind of give some curvy lines in a circle. And I'm using sort of a burgundy, purple, gold, orange thread. It's a uh, multicolor, but it has all these colors in it, so I think that'll be kind of fun. And I'm just going to swing around. And just work my way around here. And then what we're going to do after is clip the edges of these seams or these uh, petals and I have to decide I don't know if I'm going to wash this like you would for a rag quilt or if I'm just going to kind of brush it apart I don't know I mean everything should hold up well but it's just sort of something I hadn't thought that far through Okay, so I have this one, 
And now I'm just going to, I'll cut the top thread, I'll leave the bottom one, I'll come back and catch it. And then I'll come up here, let's say I did that one, come up here, and I want to stitch it down so that it's under the um, previous petal. So I, I don't necessarily want the stitching here. If it shows, I'm not that particularly worried about it. But my goal is to have it come uh, more like underneath so it's not quite so visible. And I'll just swing it around like this. And just follow the curves. I'm going to be careful. I've stabbed myself a number of times here. Okay, let's do a little bit more here. And there's no, again, everything about this is no right or wrong. You just sort of do what works best for you and choose the colors and the fabrics you like. Okay, so I'm going to end this one. And I'll cut that thread right there. All right, I'm going to take one of these pins out. And I'll start right here. I can grab that thread. There we go. And we'll start right here. You know, the other thing I thought about that would be kind of fun is to put a big button right in the middle, the uh, center of the flower. It'd be kind of fun, especially if I had an orange one. It would be nice and bright. All right, so I'm going to take this out, and I'll hopefully be able to find a way for it to go back. You know, when you take something like that, they don't ever quite want to fit in again after the fact, but we'll work through it. And here we go. All right, we've got that one. And now we should be able to get our yellow one in. And, you know, the other thing you can do, I didn't do on the other petals, but... You know, you can turn these so they're offset a bit, and that just sort of adds a little bit of, of dimension. Now, what I think I'd kind of like to do is move this up a little bit and just sort of keep it closer to the middle. But I may sew around a few times. And just kind of see how it goes. I know I keep bumping the camera, sorry. Close quarters here. So I'll come out this way and come this way. And just kind of see the color changing in the thread. There's all different kinds of colors in here, which makes it fun. Gotta be careful, those edges want to roll up. Just run around a few more times. Kind of want to get that middle filled. And if you just keep going around, you're going to get a nice dark circle. Though it won't be all, you know, nice even concentric circles, but I think it'll be a nice touch. And I'm going to take it in a little smaller. I'm kind of good with that. And we'll cut some of this off the back. 
I have to come back and trim my threads. There we go, right there. And there we are. So the next thing then, in order to finish this off, is just to trim these edges. And um, then they're going to fray and they look wonderful. There is a uh, video tutorial. These are basically, for the most part, they're called French roses. They're from the French rose quilt pattern. And it's been around for a long time. I made some vintage rose quilt pillows. And I couldn't think of it for a minute what it was. And I have a pattern for it that has the uh, template to make your petals. And, and it's really very pretty. There's also a heart template. But uh, I'll put the link up above as well as down in the description if that's something you're interested in. It's a pattern for, I think, about $7. But I think this is adorable. But I'm anxious to show you. I don't think I'm going to wash this. I'm just, I, the other thing with red, I don't want to take a chance of it, uh, the colors running, and that is a, a big problem. So I'm just going to uh, cut this, clip this, and give it a good scrubbing, and I bet those will come nice and loose, get all those threads out, and we'll have some fun, fun ragged edges. All right, one down, and let's see what we have for the next one. I like these dots, and that works good with that gray up there. It's a little bit of a lavender. So this and this, and then I need to find something down here. Eeks, that's too much. Um, what do I have? I may have to go dig in a little further. Um, I don't think I have anything handy right here. Let's see what's on the other side. And what I may do, well, I don't want to repeat the same polka dots, although that would work really good here because of these colors. Look at those colors are perfect. Um, it's just kind of a strange cut. Okay, so if I were to do something like this, obviously I have to trim it um, just because that's sort of unusual like that. So, and here, instead of polka dots, what can I put? I have, I want something with a maybe a little bit of color because that's, Oh, that could work. And so I'm going to go ahead and find just the perfect one. I think that's going to be it. And I'll show you how I'm going to sew this. One thing that, um, if you prefer, is to pin these. You can pin it right to the batting. So I have my batting here on top of the piece that we did the... Um, the fusion, the iron-on. And so this can all be pinned together. And I'm going to get this sewn. This piece I'm going to do a little bit different. So this is the, the fused batting, and it's a very low loft because basically it's just fleece attached. It's not the uh, super lofty uh, batting that we're used to. And then what I do is I just pin all these pieces in the order I'm going to use it. And I take the first piece at the bottom, I'll pull the pin out, and what I want to do is line this up with the bottom edge. And then I'll take it down about half an inch. So you can see that there is my batting. And then this will hang over on the edge. And I want to make sure it extends over both sides of the batting on each side. And keep it as, you know, sort of straight-ish. Now what I'm going to do is sew this top edge. And... You know, like I said, you can kind of go back and forth, do something like that. For something here, you could certainly do decorative stitches. I'm just going to go straight. But you know what? Let's do a curved stitch. Let's let's do something different. And let's see what I have on here. So I have a curved stitch, and I'm going to take it as long and as wide as it'll go. All right, so I, I'm going to make it like a shallow scallop. And I'll do the first row and I'll overlap it so that I'm sewing half fabric, half batting, just to make sure that edge fits in good. Oh, that's going to be awfully small. Well, it doesn't go any bigger. All right, if that's not going to work, then I am going to take this just to a straight stitch. Now, in a situation like this, when you're going to sew close to the edge, you want your presser foot to hold that edge in place. And so we're going to move this needle. We can put it in the center like this, 
but I'm going to take it all the way to that side. Is it there yet? There we go. So that as I'm sewing, the foot will hold it in place as I'm getting stitches right along that edge. And that's just going to help me keep things nice and neat and I won't get any fold over. I don't want to get too close. Or excuse me, yeah, too close. I want to get a little bit away. There we go. And I'm almost going to do like a basting. No, let's see. I'll do about a 3.5. No, that's okay. I can do a regular 3. Um, I've never done this before. I love doing new things and sharing it as I go because then we can explore and find out what works and what doesn't. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is quilt this, and I'm going to do it the same way as I did with the other one. Now, you'll notice by using this fusible fleece, you don't have all that extra batting hanging around getting in the way. Um, I find that to be a bit uh, problematic at times. Okay, so I'm going to put my needle back in the center, and I'm just going to sew... Uh, maybe a quarter of an inch from that edge and I'm just going to work my way across and we're going to continue this all the way to the edge and I do want to make sure that this final edge is stitched because we're going to need that to be held together when we do our finishing. So I think I'll go ahead and I'll put a wider one in here. And then we'll put a few narrows for close to the bottom. All right. My first strip is quilted. I did a wide and then a few narrows and wide at the end. Whoops, excuse me, I hit the camera. And then I placed the second piece on top and I measured from this edge down to make sure it's relatively straight. And what I'm going to do first is sew along this edge. I put some pins in to hold it there and then I'm going to work my way up. So let me go ahead and get started on this first row. I do want to let me get my thread sew as close as possible. So what I'm doing is I'll put my presser foot right along that edge, and I think you can see that the needle is to the left side, excuse me, to the right side. So it's all the way over here. So it's going to sew really, really close on this side. So let me go ahead and put that in place. That's a little too close because I don't want to ravel the fabric. Now there are other methods you can use that will, what do I want to say, support the fabric so that you have less raveling. And we'll talk about that later. Right now we're just sort of doing some free quilting with the walking foot which is about the easiest way to do it. And I'm almost going off that edge. All right, so it's right, right there. I actually missed it. So I'm going to do another really close one and make sure I catch it all. And I'm going to put my needle back in the center position. And I'll put this right on the edge so it'll be close, but not on top of it. And I'm going to show you why this is not going to be a problem if we have any loose pieces. So let me go ahead and we're just going to work our way through to the edge of this and continue. Whoops, we ran out of bobbin. Oh my goodness. All right, let me take care of that. But then what we'll do is we'll continue laying this out. And as I add each piece, I'll measure just to make sure we're sort of in a horizontal position for our kind of quasi landscape. And I'll bring each piece down overlay them just a little bit and sew that. So let me go ahead and uh, work my way up a bit and I'll be back. 
I have four of the six rows all sewn on and, you know, varying widths along the way. And I've worked from this side out. Now I'm going to turn it around to work from the other side because I want to make sure that I'm nice and even. So when I cut this, that the strips are relatively where they need to be. So I'm going to take this top one out so that I can measure down from my fleece. Let me just tuck a pin here and here. And I will put this on top. And whoops, that's a salvage. Let's go this way. And I want this to come over the edge of the fleece and on top of that, kind of here and here and pull it just to make sure I'm over the fleece. Now, what I want to do is make sure I'm relatively um, equal on my distance. So here I have seven eighths. So that's uh, two and seven eighths in here. Oh, look at that. I love it when it works. Okay, so I'm just going to tuck these pins in to hold everything right where I want it. We got lucky there, let me tell you. But I did measure coming up from the other side just to make sure that, you know, my strips weren't getting crooked because that's very easy to do as, you, uh, as you're as you sewing. So let's go ahead and put this here. My fleece starts there. You can see where my stitches are. And I'm just going to sew right along here. just inside that raw edge. And I'm going to hold that fabric to the back just to keep it taut so it doesn't want to roll over. All right, so I can take my pins out. Everything's where I need it. Cut my thread, I'll go back and I will just, whoops then keep doing my quilting until I'm up to the top and add the last row and then we are good. But then there is another finishing touch that we're going to add along the way. So let me go ahead and I'm going to do this a bit on the wide side. And as you can see, my quilting lines are far from perfection and that's okay. It's actually easier to see mistakes when everything is super perfect. All right, let's take this one over. And I think you've all figured out by now, if you've been watching my videos for any length of time, you know, I'm having fun. I want to just get it done. I'm not getting caught up with too many of the details. I want to do it right, and I want to do a good job but I'm not going to sweat little waivers in my lines because that really, in the long you know, scheme of things, is not going to matter. Now when I get to this point, what I can do is come in and sew right along this edge because that'll hold this down and then I can come back and sew in here. So let me go ahead and do this. And now I'm going to come in and put a couple wide ones. So I'm going to go right down the middle here. Okay, we're going to put the last piece on. We are just about there. All right, to sew this last row on, I have it overlapping the fleece by about three-eighths of an inch, a little more than uh, a quarter. And so I'm going to come down about half an inch from the top because that's where my fleece will line up and come right in here. So this will all eventually get uh, trimmed off, but then I can make sure I have a nice straight line at the top that I'm working with. More or less, of course. <laughs> the cut will be straight eventually. The line, the quilting line, Maybe, maybe not. And, you know, I laugh about it because it's really okay. It's just a fun project to do, and it's sort of 
um, a creative way to quilt and just do something a little different, kind of stretch your imagination. And let's do some narrow rows here. There we go. And I'm just going to finish doing this all the way down to the bottom. And then we have the final step. And oh, that's the part I'm looking forward to. Now I'm attaching the strips to the quilted top. And what I'm doing is I put interfacing on the back so it, it gives it some body so I can sew along the edge and not have it fray. And I've sewn this edge and then I'm going to come here. And then what I'm going to do is kind of quilt across like I did um, throughout the other. Throughout. So let's see if I put it in the center. Yeah, I'll do this tiny. So I'm going to sew right down the middle of the strip. And then I'm going to turn around and come back down each side. And that'll make some nice narrow channels. And let's see, come over here. All right, and that's how that is. So this goes very easily. And it just adds a nice touch. It adds a little extra color, a little more dimension. Now in this one, instead of going down the middle, I'm going to go down... Um, each side and kind of go off center. This is a narrower strip, so I'll keep these close together. And I'll run this between the two lines. And so I'm just going to continue this with all the strips so that I can oops, get them all finished and trimmed. And then we'll go ahead and we'll add our, our flower on this one. This is going to be a different flower than what the other was. And I think you're going to like it. Uh, it'll be a little, a little more modern looking, which I think will be a lot of fun. I find it easier to sew in the one direction instead of flipping my fabric around. I'm um, not quite sure why. I think it's just more comfortable. But when I have to sew along the edge, I want to have it this way. Isn't that funny how we have our, our, our uh, preferences depending on the direction we're going? Because I want to sew right along that edge. We'll come over right there. All right. Moving right along here. And just one more to go. Working on the final strip. And I just think these strips, in addition to just having another dimension to what we have going on here, I love how they add just the little bits of color. The larger strips have bolder colors and bigger prints. But these little strips, I think they're, they're definitely just a nice little accent. I like how they look. And there we have it. It's finished. And they all look wonderful. Everything's nice and flat. And the strips, the quilting lines look really well with what we've got going on here. Oh, it's great. Now I'm going to put the flowers on. Now the second flower is all full of layers, lots of colors and different shapes and curves and points and a uh, little circle in the middle. And I'm going to attach it differently than the other one I did. Now the other thing is I'm using a really dark um, variegated thread. It's purple and navy. So it's really going to stand out, and I'm going to want to do some circular um, sewing around, so it's going to be fun. But the first thing I need to do is put in a few spokes to hold things down. Now, a lot of times when I do quilting like this, I will use Steam-A-Seam 2 and glue everything together. But 
I'm just going freehand on all this and we're just going to see how it works. So let me just get started here and I'm going to go across, like I said, in about five different directions. And let's see, so if I'm going to go here, I'll probably come out to about this point. So I'm going to sew around. To about here and then I'm going to come straight across and this will just help keep everything intact as I'm I'm doing my uh, my circular because I want to sew around this and uh, kind of have some dark threads showing up all right, so I'm going to go this way, and I want it to be on this outer. There we go. I don't want to sew all these points just yet. We'll get that outer layer. Maybe. Well, it doesn't want to cooperate, of course, now... This is on a curve, so it's on a bias, and it may not want to cooperate, and it could just be that I'm too close to that edge, which can definitely be problematic. Okay, we're coming around, and let's see, I want to get to about right here, and I'll come up to this edge. So that I can sew in and come all the way across. Just go right through the middle. All right, so I didn't get one all the way out, but I think that'll work. So what I'm going to do is take this and place it on the background. I already have the stem in place, so I just put this on top. And I think I'm going to put this red side down. So that'll be my top. So let me get my, my background and show you how this is going to look. All right, here we are. And I want the red down. I want to kind of center this in the middle and I want it I want it equal on each side and then a little farther down so I don't want it to be exactly the same margin so to speak these I do but I'm going to bring that down just a little bit more and we've got our stem so what I'm going to do actually is I'll just pick up where's the one that I left off and I'll show you how I'm going to do this. So I'm going to come out to the edge. And I'm going to kind of do like triangles. It sounds a little crazy. And so I'll come out here. I might need this just to hold it in place. And I'll come over about an inch and then come across. With all my edges pretty much secured with these large triangles, I'm going to start going around the center. And I'm just going to go slow and just follow the edges, especially in the middle, because you can't really do a whole lot other than just a basic circle. As I get farther out, I want to weave around a little bit. So let's go ahead. I'm catching up to there, and now I'm going to swing out, and we'll do the next round. And the farther out you go, the easier it becomes. And you just let your needle go, and you spin the fabric. You can see I'm not pulling, tugging, doing anything. I'm just letting it go around and around. All right, now I'm going to kind of roll this up. And let's see if I can start doing a little 
kind of going in and out. Kind of a wavy sort of a look to it. And we'll see. Whoops. Get stuck as I go around the corner there. There we go. Just kind of come out in a spiral. You don't want to flip any corners over, any edges. So just kind of keep them all in place. So it's almost like you're doing a, whoops, get him under there, a zigzag motion as you're going around. And it's kind of creating a nice little curve. See how we're getting that um, irregular curve? Now you can just go round and round, you know, and, and continue with the triangle as well. I really like that look on the outer edge. That dark purple and navy really stands out against the uh, low volume fabrics, and I think it looks terrific. All right, now this one, I have to be careful because there's points, and those little corners can flip over on us. Just kind of have to get them at the right angle. And just keep going around. All right, we're getting farther out, so it's going to get easier. The bigger the uh, circle, the easier it is to sew around, especially when you're doing this funny little curvy wavy thing. And just kind of pull your fabric back and forth and let the walking foot do its job. All right, we're gonna come out here. And to kind of follow the outer edge of these petals as best I can. I think that'll be easier than trying to not catch them and twist them. There we go. Now, once this is done, the other thing is to add some hand stitching, to do some, you know, heavy hand embroidery like French knots or, um, you know, any kind of a accent like that. With my flower finished, I'm going to just do a quick zigzag around the edge. Easier said than done. I might need to do a straight stitch first. Well, we'll see. Maybe this will work. Um, I may add binding. I'm not sure how I'm going to finish these. But um, I'll just do a zigzag. It'll hold everything together and uh, give me an idea of what it will look like. I have done uh, where I finish these with a satin stitch. And that takes a lot of thread, but it does look nice. All right, let's get this up here. Get that corner underneath. And uh, so we'll see how it's going to look. But I love how the flower turned out. I think it's adorable. 
and the leaves are so pretty. I just like the look of how everything works together. There's so much color, but all that color looks awesome. All right, just kind of tuck this in here. And snip this off. Okay, so here we are. How fun is that? And there's a lot of ways we can do the back, and, you know, we can talk about that to put the little, uh, you can actually do a tube. You can, another fun way is just to take a uh, piece of fabric that do like this and put a triangle in each corner, and then you've got, like, little corner pockets to put a little dowel or something of that nature, even a narrow piece of wood, like, you know, uh, like a paint stirrer or yardstick or something can tuck right in there and hang it up. So there's a lot of options. So we'll take a look at that. But this is what I wanted to share with you is, is doing some of these, you know, fun uh, quilting pieces like this and, and just, you know, add colors and stitch and layer and see what you can come up with. So let me go ahead and uh, pull all this together and I'll show you the final look of everything. Here's another quick peek. I hope you had fun today. I really enjoyed making these quilts and I hope you learned a lot and maybe are inspired to try your own. They really are adorable and such fun to make. I sure appreciate you following along. Have a wonderful day, and as always, it's my pleasure to share my quilting with you. Thank you so much for being here.